What you are now looking at is what I consider to be one of the worst, no, one of the dumbest products ever created. What we have here is the Kodak Advantix Preview. A little bit of background on the Advantix uh, film technology. In about 1996, Kodak came out with what I would call 35 millimeter film 2.0. What it really was was a high tech version of 35 millimeter film in that um, every camera that used this film had some very basic features. It was like a set of features that um, were expected of cameras using this uh, particular film. And what it really did was it offered off the bat, drop in loading. No more fumbling around in the dark trying to thread the film through your camera. The camera had a door on the bottom and you would open this door and drop your film in and close it and that was it. For those of you who have never used a 35 millimeter camera, and I'm sure there are some of you that haven't, um, this was a big advantage because it offered quicker reloading and um, you know, for people who are trying to shoot at sporting events, for instance, and they wanted to catch or capture every every movement, um, you could just boom, bang, done, drop it in. It'll rewind automatically and advance to the first frame. In addition to that, it would had it had automatic frame advance. I believe every Advantix camera had this function. Um, and no, it it has nothing to do with Chantix, the anti-smoking drug, but it. It's kind of like that in a way, or not. Um, and I know that some 35 millimeter cameras actually had drop in loading, but the Advantix film had a few other advantages, hence the name. Um, number one, every camera using Advantix film had this CHP button. And what that did was it would allow you to change the format of the image. You could do a classic portrait, which would be 4x3. H would be high definition, and I believe that was 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And P for panoramic. And as part of this technology, when you press that button, it would actually record on the film, either on a magnetic strip, or using an optical section of film, or a section of film reserved uh, for recording a pattern of squares that the machine processing the film could utilize to determine whether it's a high definition panoramic or classic portrait. In addition to that, the Advantix cameras could also record the date and time on the film so that it could be printed on the back of the of the uh, picture. Um, previous to that, a regular 35 millimeter camera would print the date and time on the photograph, but that wasn't always desirable. So you had the functionality of being able to record this information basically um, on the back of the image, or on the back of the photograph. Around the time the Advantix started to um, compete with digital photography, a lot of the companies processing the film, like Walgreens, Walmart, and etc., etc., um, they offered direct-to-CD processing, so you could actually have the images um, recorded to a CD for you, so you could actually put them on your computer. Because at the time, digital cameras weren't quite up to par, and they were very expensive. Now, the Advantix was not, or APS, as it was known in the industry, was not limited to just Kodak. 
Um, I know that Fuji, Konica, and I believe Agfa um, all offered a variant of the Advantix film. I don't know if it was licensed or not, but it was compatible with Advantix cameras. So, I remember when my dad, for I think my mom's birthday, in like 1997, decided that we were going to get her a new camera. Now at the time, I was about 13 years old, and Advantix cameras were really becoming quite popular. Um, so we went out and we bought her a fairly basic model, and she used that up until recently, <laughs> when I finally, um, I think I bought her a, uh, a digital camera. But she used it up until recently, um, I would say up until about 2005 or six. To me, that's quite recent. Anyway, uh, so yeah, she used that, and now you can't even buy the film anymore, so <laughs> it's, it's pretty much useless now. She might even still have the damn thing. But this camera is quite special in that it is one of the dumbest products I have ever seen, and when they came out in 2000, I was thinking to myself, who the... F would buy that. And what were they thinking? Okay, here's why I don't like this camera. And I bought this camera to make this video. You're welcome. Um, okay, 2000. The digital photo revolution is in full swing. People are buying low cost, well, actually they were quite expensive, uh, but low resolution cameras that astronomical prices but you could buy a very basic camera for about hundred and fifty dollars probably about as much as this damn thing cost and you know they weren't great but they were fairly usable and the images were recognizable I mean what else do you want right um, but a decent digital camera would have set you back about four or five hundred bucks this was in 2000 maybe not that much so, why does this camera, why, what is, what is so bad about it? Well, they wanted to make a hybrid film camera. And only Kodak was smart enough to do this. Can you sense the sarcasm? Um, <laughs> they came out with this Advantix preview camera. Now, what it does is, all right, so I'll open up the lens here. Here's the lens. This is what this is uh, a feature that I, every Advantix has is a flip up lens a flip up lens cover with a built in flash, not bad in and of itself. Um, but what they have done here is they have somewhere in this camera they have added a um, a digital image sensor. I don't know what they used or what the resolution is. But it is a film camera, so what you do is you snap your picture, click, and it shows up not before you take the image, but after. So you can't, if this was, if this was, if they were smart, they would have figured out a way to use this LCD screen. I probably should have mentioned, here, I'll start over. Um, you take your picture, boom, and you have to take it using the viewfinder. Okay, so it's not like what you see is what you get. It's not an SLR camera. So you take your picture, zam, there it is. Okay. Once you've taken the picture and it has been permanently recorded to the film, you can press the preview button and that shows you what you've taken the picture of. Okay, it gets worse. Now, let's say you want to see what's on the roll. Now you're thinking, well, okay, great. So I can see what photos are on that roll, right? Wrong. Um, it only stores one image, one preview. So I can take a picture of this claw machine here. Bang. I've already used that section of film. I can't go back and delete it. And I've already taken the image, or taken the photo. Now I'm going to hit the preview button. Oh, gee, that photo sucks. So then the screen goes to like a blank screen and I have to take the picture again using another section of film. Oh, that photo came out okay. <laughs> you see where I'm going with this? What were they thinking? Now, you're also thinking, well, couldn't I just add memory to it or 
download the images to my computer with a USB cable or even a serial cable? No, not quite. There is no such thing on this camera. You cannot store the images that were taken with the digital portion of the camera. You can't store them, you can't transport them. They're just there until you take another picture. But here's where they think the benefit of that is. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> instead of using this nice, brilliant LCD screen for the menu, they used this um, LCD screen on the bottom, which is just a basic um, non-backlit display. Really effing stupid, if you ask me. Because if I'm in the, if it's, let's say it's dark out, and I want to take a picture of something, and it would show up, you know, if it's bright enough to show up on the screen, or on the, on the film. I can't read the freaking menu because it's on the non-backlit portion, so if I want to change some of the settings, the date, the time, what have you, I can't do that. Because it shows up on the screen down here. What the hell? Who, what, why, where, and how, I don't know. Um... Oh, yes, and it gets even worse. Check this out. You know why I can't show you this camera in action? Because I have to buy these. These are CR123s. Is that what they are? Uh, I guess the full model is like CR123. Um, these actually aren't that old. That I reckon maybe about five years old, maybe. Um, but they're dead. They're three volts. You know... And I bet they don't last very long because that little LCD screen that they've used really sucks up a lot of juice. Um, you know, because it's an LCD screen with a fluorescent backlight. So, y you know, it's it's like, what what the hell are they thinking? I mean, it's a certain, certainly, it's, it's not a bad camera. I mean, it does have 2. Point, oh, really, 2.6x optical zoom. whoop de freaking ding dong do uh, 2.6x, uh, but better than nothing, I guess. I mean, there, there, there have been worse cameras, I, I, I think. So let's see. We have one of these must be an infrared focusing light. I would, I would hope. One of them must be the CMOS image sensor. And uh, let's see. I don't know what. There has to be a light sensor for the iris here somewhere. So, and then you've got the. Um, the uh, can you see through this? You've got the um, viewfinder, so you can't use the LCD screen as a viewfinder. That's really stupid. Let's crack it open. Okay, so we got the covers off. Broke them. Whoops. Um, hmm. Is there a date stamp in here? No, wouldn't be that fortunate, would it? So let's take a look at the basic componentry here. We have a couple of uh, flex circuits with the um, control buttons built in. Boom, bing. We have a waste of an LCD screen. Now, you got to remember here, about 2000 the price of LCD screens was really, really high. That was one of the reasons digital cameras were so expensive. Um, because LCD screens were at an all-time premium. And that is why I call this a waste of an LCD screen. They could have used it for something useful. I mean, they could have done... I guess my point is Kodak could have done so much with this camera, but they didn't. You know, they could have used it as kind of a, a, cry, a hybrid, a real hybrid camera, an actual film camera, um, with some digital camera functionality, but they didn't do that. And that is, that kind of short-sighted thinking is what drove the company. Well, that and the competition for low-cost consumer digital cameras was really high. But if they had been smart, they could have, they could have really done something with this. But they didn't. They didn't. And that is why I'm so distraught. Kodak was a local company. I believe their headquarters were somewhere... I think they were actually in Billerica, Massachusetts. I've actually seen one of their... No, I'm thinking of Polaroid. I've actually seen Polaroid's building. 
and they had the market for a long time and they lost it because of digital cheap digital cameras put them out of business that. Um, they were expensive then but they're not now all right so here we go um, I'm doing a quite ham-fisted operation here I know that uh, it's not exactly my my normal carefulness way of tearing stuff apart um, but I have no intentions of ever putting this thing back together again um, because it's worth like five dollars I paid seven so this video cost me seven dollars to make the things I do for you guys you have no idea um, okay fine I did it to satisfy my own curiosity all right I'm looking for the CMOS image sensor I want to see if they had integrated one somewhere into the lens path but I somehow doubt that um, like if they used a series of mirrors and oh wait you know what I can take the front cover off my take this as prize off here yeah it does doesn't it close your eyes Ugh. close your eyes and squeeze there we go there we go. Now it's tough now. There you go. All right. Piece of shit. All right. So here we have the lens body right there. Here I got a rubber gasket. Oh no, a metal metal plastic. I don't know what it is. It's gaskety. All righty. We have the front cover. The Advantix flash Xenon Xenon Xena the Flash Warrior Princess. Um, here we go. We got a motor housing here. We've got this motor drives the. I want to say it drives the Film Advance. Um, a lot of intricate parts here, you know, because after all, it still is a quasi-mechanical camera. What's inside here? A big giant capacitor. Watch out for that. They bite. I know. <laughs> oh, do I ever. Funny story. I was taking an old camera apart once, and um, it, oh, it was actually one of those uh, throwaway cameras with a flash. And um, so there's the gearbox. These motors are really cool, by the way. Um, if you ever happen across them. They're cool because you can use them for a variety of different hobby projects. Oh, this is interesting. Um, let me turn the light on here. Wrong, wrong button. There we go. Um, this has a little slotted wheel here with an optical sensor. If it senses, if the motor stops spinning when it's supposed to, it stops because it tells it that obviously the film is at the end. So that's kind of neat. A um, little bit of feedback there. That's good to see. Um, oh wait, no, this is the lens motor. Ah, this is this is actually the zoom motor. So if the zoom ever stops moving, and this slotted wheel stops spinning, then it it will stop moving. There's actually two. There's one here and there's one up here. There's two. Ah 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 ah. Okay. Two, two, ah, ah. You know, that's Dracula. Uh, the, I am the count. Yeah, that's the count, the count, drag, count. No, the count. That's just, yeah. I am the count. That's it. Like, yes. Yes, 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 yes. You see, you can't even see me taking these screws out. I should move the. I should use a tripod, but, you know, that'd be too much work. Um just blindly taking screws out. I don't know what I'm doing. Ooh. We've got... Look at the size of these gears. Tiny little things. And this... drives... Okay. I see how that works. Um, the looks of it. Yeah, that's exactly what it does. 
um, it actually, when you zoom in, it zooms in the viewfinder to match. That's kind of neat. It's good to remember that when you're taking something like this apart with the intention of putting it back together again, you have a lot of timing issues you have to worry about when you reassemble. If you have these gears out of time, then they're not going to work so good. Um, because you don't want to have the lens zoomed in with the viewfinder zoomed out. You see, that would, that would, that would cause a lot of grief for you. Um, so this is definitely not an SLR lens, as you well know. Um, it's just a separate, carefully aimed, there's a term for that, I'm sure. I think it's cheap is the term they use. Oh, here's another one. Look at the size of this motor. A baby little thing. I'm going to save these motors. These are cool. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but it looks like it's being used to drive something else as part of the viewfinder. I'm not sure what, but we'll probably figure that out as we dig in. Um, I wonder if it, you know, I bet it changes the, uh, the viewfinders. Um, there must be like a, a little window that switches over when you change the aspect ratio of the of the image and um, that's probably what that does it's a smartly built camera just really really poorly thought out you know they could have they could have had a great product here and they didn't they failed they failed as a company. If this camera was made in China, it would brush your teeth and take camera, uh, take digital and film images. But in America, we don't believe in going above and beyond. We believe in doing the bare freaking minimum. And that, my friends, this is an American company at the time. They were still mostly American. And this is the kind of innovation that we've come to expect from our homeland, for those of us Americans. You know, they go almost all the way, but they don't do it because marketing says no or because there's some red tape. It's a shame. And that is why so many American companies are failing because they don't think ahead. You know, we'll design something great. But then marketing says, well, no, we're not going to do that because it's going to piss off this guy who's been here for 30 years and he doesn't like that. And so we're going to just release the bare minimum and we're going to create a product that could be a great idea. Here's the capacitors that bite. If they're ever charged, do not touch them. Um, I'm going to make sure this one is discharged. Um, okay. Flex circuits are always fun. I used to work for a company that makes flex circuits. <sighs> I was working in the planning department. That's a fun job. Um, okay. I think I found our CMOS sensor. At least that's what it looks like. So, all right, here we go. Um... Light comes in here. There's some mirrors in here. There's like a hall, hall of mirrors. And I see what looks like it could be an image sensor right here. It's a Sanyo sensor. It looks like one. I'm not sure if it is yet. It could be just another freaking light sensor. I don't know. Um, there's a lot of those. But it has too many leads to be just a common light sensor. I just popped it out. And it is now on the floor. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It is a CMOS image sensor. Hallelujah. It may not be a CMOS image sensor. It could be something else. But it is definitely an, a photo sensor. Um, that's, that's absolutely what this is. So it looks like we've determined where that is coming off of. The digital image is coming off of the viewfinder. Oh, sh Nikes. I just remembered I was going to give this camera to my little sister. <laughs> I just completely forgot about that. I, in the heat of the moment, I just started ripping into it. But it was my intention, after buying it, to give it to my little sister who collects cameras. Oh, crap. Oh, uh, well, good thing I never told her I was going to give it to her. Because that's not going to happen now. 
Uh, this camera may have film in it. I don't know. We're going to find out, though. I couldn't get the film door open. I think it's locked. I have to power it up first. It won't let me open it. So let's see what... I'm going to look inside here. This will tell me um, if there is anything in there, film-wise. I don't want to scratch up my counters. I just put these in, damn it. Hmm. Oh, oh, there we go. Yep, I think there is, uh, there is film in there. There it is. I couldn't get the cartridge out because there's film in it. That's and it's wound in. Um, there's nothing good on there because um, yeah, it's not going to happen. Not going to happen for you, camera. Let's try to pry this damn door open. There we go. Got the door open. Now we have to cut the film like so. Or just take it out like this. So this is what Advantix film looks like. Bada boom, bada bing. Um, okay, so there's somebody's wedding photos. Um, here's the lens. You can see inside the lens there. Now, this camera should have a magnetic reader, and it does. I think that's what it might be. Because it has to record the data on the image um, somehow. So it has either a magnetic reader, or writer I should say, or it could have a, an optical version, but I think this one is of the magnetic variety. Oh wait a minute, it's part of the door that I ripped off. There it is. See that? It's got a head right there. That's a magnetic read right head. And that is how it records the image data onto the film. And if you look at the film, there should be a magnetic track to correspond to it. Although it looks like the entire film might be the magnetic track. Oh wait, I think I see it. I could be wrong. No, I can't tell. If we had some metal filings, we could probably find it, but we don't. So that's pretty much it. We have figured out what each motor does. Uh, this motor, I don't quite know what it does. Um, I think what this is actually functioning as, and we'll have to pull this thing apart. You have to pull the viewfinder body apart because we want to find out what that looks like. So let's do that. Let's take that all apart. I have a mess here. Oh boy. And my can my sister's not getting this camera, unfortunately. She would love it. She'd be like, oh my god, I love it. But, hey, you know, sometimes I get a little carried away. And this is one of those times. So, all right, here we go. Let's tear this camera a new one. All right. Uh, did I miss one? Yeah, I did. I this one right there. Bing, 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 bing. I just made up this song. Ding, 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 ding. All right, pull this apart here and see what's inside. Was I right? I was right. <laughs> okay, this motor is, it drives a little wheel that changes, oh yeah, you have all sorts of different image settings. Um, you have like a, like a, f a tinted window there and you've got uh, it just shows you what the, each setting looks like. Um, look at these lenses. Wow, look at that. It's just for the viewfinder. That's pretty cool. Um, hmm. Just for the viewfinder, they did all that work. And then you can see where it reflects down off of this into the, um, the uh, digital sensor. Um, good stuff. <laughs> It's diffused. So this up here, oh, you know what? Okay, this doesn't change the viewfinder. It only changes what's recorded by the CMOS sensor, this thing right here. And 
So if you shoot a panoramic image, it doesn't change. It doesn't change the um, the image being recorded and displayed. It uses a mechanical filter wheel to do that, which, in my humble opinion, is a waste of freaking materials. At least that's what it looks like it does. I, I see a tinted window, like three different gradients here. So I could be I could be off. I don't really know why they would go this far into designing. Well, then again, I, I, I don't think the camera should exist, period. So I have ruined this motor. It's no longer usable. But look at the size of it. Tiny little thing. It's like you drop it in water. And it becomes a, a Mabuchi hobby motor. All right. Uh, so you got the lens drive motor here on the top. Where is the motor that drives the film? Where might that sucker be? I don't see it. I don't see it, man. It's probably buried in there somewhere. Let's try to get this off. Okay. Yeah, probably buried way deep in there. Let's just take these out of there. Good, done. And see, everything is soldered on, so <laughs> I couldn't, even though I wanted to take this apart for repairs, I couldn't. I mean, it wouldn't be worth it. I mean, I have to desolder everything and screw that. Um, okay, I see that they've integrated the motor into this housing. So there's the bottom of the motor. It's right inside there. And uh, so there it is. There it is, pals. That's the film. There's going to be another one, I imagine. Now let's get this film covered out. Let's try to get this taken out of here so we can examine it. Now, there is an eject button. I think that's it. Uh, it's not working for me, but uh, it's broken. Piece of shit. All right. There we go. So they were using Konica. Konica APS film. This is the generic stuff, folks. Um, generic meaning it's not the, well, it's not really generic, but. So here is the exposure status window. One is unexposed, two is partially, three I don't know, and four I don't know. I think four is processed and three is fully exposed. So this little white window thing turns around. Okay. Um, yeah, so there's going to be another motor inside there somewhere. And I don't see it yet. Because it has to be able to drive it forward and back. So there's got to be another motor in there. So let's see if we can find it. Best $7 I ever spent. What do you think? All right, so that motor is, or was, somewhere else. I don't know where. I don't know where that motor would be. Okay, it looks like it's geared up to this. So this motor does everything. It does all the work. What, what a chump. You know, what a freaking chump. This motor does it all. Not this one, I'm sorry, this one on the bottom here. It's all run by the same freaking motor. Okay, that's okay, that's all right, I can live with that. Well, folks, I think that pretty much does it. My knees are killing me from kneeling on the concrete floor. It hurts. Ow! Damn! Okay. <sighs> Camera autopsy. What a mess I have made. Look at, would you, would, would you look at that? Oh, God. How am I ever 
going to clean that up. Rubicon. Ooh, yeah. Photo. Rubicon photo. 300 microfarad. 330 volts. That will... That right there will put hair on your chest. Um, look at a tiny little key my sensor with no purpose in life. Okay. You know, you gotta think, people actually make these. They actually, that's their job, is to build these cameras, and they're not all automated, trust me. <laughs> a lot of this stuff is done by hand in China. It's cheap that way. But, golly. Huh. So this magnet is like a transmission shifter lever. And what it does... This probably reverses the motor direction, like it has something to do with that, I guess. Engage, disengage, that dealy deal. And the eject lever links to that thing right there. And when the film is ejected, it trips a sensor here. Looks like, you no, know, actually no, those sensors are for the film type detection. Look at that. You get those little contacts in there. And that tell the camera, tells the camera probably what the exposure count is for the film. And it links up to these right here. Or, or I have a better theory. This rotating disc, depending on the position, which is sensed by those little fingers, tells the camera how many exposures are left on the roll. I think we've learned quite a bit. And it's possible that if it's, say, a black and white roll, or a lower than 25 or more than 25 exposure roll, that that data could be read possibly by the magnetic encoder decoder right here. I think I got it. I think I know. I think I know. I think I've figured it all out. Hmm, yeah, right. Did I say that was a Sanyo chip? It is a Sanyo chip. Did not know Sanyo was in that business. The more you know, the more you grow. This vacuum tube does basically what this little transistor does. <laughs> Amazing. I don't actually know what this vacuum tube is, but I'm sure some of you could tell me. Um, I don't really care, but anyway, I, I think it's a, I think it's an amplification tube and from an audio amp. That's what it came out of. So. All right, well, I'm going to package all this up. Oh, let's take a look at this LCD screen. Let's see what uh, manufacturer was suckered into making those. Casio. It is a Casio LCD screen. Look at it. Damn. All right. Okay, guys, I'm going to file this in the circular recycling bin. And... Uh, upload this video. So thanks for watching and I hope I haven't bored you all to death. Um, <laughs> it's been fun.